With the second video in the Simple Interior series, we will illustrate how easy it is to change colors, add textures, and insert realistic objects into your work. This can assist in more accurate lighting calculations or dramatic presentations if you happen to know approximate finished material properties. With our model in the same state as the completed Simple Interior Phase 1 video, we can easily change the wall color and add carpet to the floor using AGI32's Surface Edit command. Select Surface Edit from the Rooms and Objects Toolkit and click on the Room Perimeter. When the dialog opens, click the Tag All Walls Shortcut button on the toolbar. This will select all walls for editing. Select the Color Cell in the Surfaces section. When the Color and Reflectance dialog opens, enter RGB values of 223, 220, and 161. Many commercial paint manufacturers have RGB values available for paint color. Now exit the color dialog. While we are still in the Surface Edit dialog, select the floor using the Tag Floor shortcut on the toolbar. Locate the Texture cell in the Surface section and click on the small button in the cell. When the Textures dialog opens, checkmark the Carpet section to see the various carpet samples available. It is easy to add your own textures to the database if you like. Select the carpet texture ET2. Notice it has a reflectance of 40%. In the lower right corner of this dialog, we can instruct AGI32 on how to apply the texture. Generally speaking, material textures that are to be applied to an entire surface look best when applied at a fixed size. For our carpet sample, applied at a fixed size of 1 foot. This means the sample shown will be 1 foot in the X direction when applied. It is automatically repeated to cover the entire surface. Now exit the Textures dialog. Remaining in the Surface Edit dialog, we can make one more change. Perhaps one wall in the model is actually made of brick. We can select a brick texture and its associated reflectance for only this wall. Using the Move to Next Surface button on the toolbar, we can move the surface highlight around the model until we find the back wall in the upper office labeled Wall 12. Click in the Texture cell and select the Brick Stone category. Select the texture titled Brick Rustic Red and apply at a fixed size of 1.33 in the X direction or 16 inches which is the actual size of the brick sample. Now exit the Textures dialog. Finally, exit the Surface Edit dialog to apply the changes. Notice the calculations are reset. This occurred as we have modified the surface reflectances of the walls and floor. This can have a sizable impact on your lighting calculations. Remember, always include surface reflectances in your project summary. The next step towards a more realistic model is to add some furniture. AGI32 has an object library with a variety of low polygon count objects that can enhance your presentations. Select the Object Library command from the Rooms and Objects Toolkit. On the left side of the dialog is a list of libraries. For each library, there is a collection of objects below. AGI32 will allow you to create your own libraries and add objects that you create, import, or modify. In the list of available libraries, select Office. In the list of Office objects, select Office Workstation. Exit the dialog. AGI32 gives you a chance to go to Surface Edit and make changes to the object properties if you like. Exit this dialog and place the object in the upper office. You might want to change your snap. Add a second and a third instance in the upper corners. Notice that we will need to rotate the upper left instance. Return to the object library with a right mouse click and select the furniture library. Locate the executive chair. Now let's add two of these into our office layout. Now use the Object Rotate command to spin the left workstation around. It is handy to locate the reference point for the rotation in the center of the workstation. We can also rotate the chairs as well for a more realistic appearance. We are now ready to move to render mode and compute. Before we press the Calculate button, we will instruct AGI32's Calculation Engine to intelligently subdivide the surfaces for more accurate luminance ratios. This will enhance our rendered results. 
To do this, we use a process called Adaptive Subdivision, which is available from the Calculate menu. The default setting is adequate for most applications. We are now ready to compute the results. While the calculations are in process, we can enable the textures from the toolbar at the base of the display. Orbit around the space. And finally, walk in to gain a nice presentation viewpoint. Computer visualizations are typically normalized such that average scene luminance is assigned to an 18% reflectance gray. As the dynamic range of the display is nowhere near that of the human visual system, we may need to compensate by adjusting the exposure of the scene if the average reflectance is something much greater or less than 18%. In AGI32, we can find the exposure adjustment in the Display Properties dialog. Each one-point change in exposure setting will either double or half the average reflectance assumption of the scene. Changing the exposure from 0 to 1 would lighten our rendering for an average reflectance of 36%. Prior to exporting any single scene as discussed in Segment 1 of this simple interior video, it is always best to set the software anti-aliasing. A setting of 15 provides the highest degree of adjustment to eliminate jagged pixel effects in your images. Anti-aliasing can be found in the lower right corner of the display. This concludes the second installment of our simple interior video example. We hope that the steps demonstrated here are effective in assisting you in your growth with AGI32. Thanks for watching.